everyone, I'm Captain Courageous, and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm revisiting my obsession with old school replica dice, specifically of the style that came in the original Holmes Basic Dungeons and Dragons box set. I covered this topic pretty extensively in my previous video, OSR Replica Dice, in which I did a retrospective on the history of dice in Dungeons and Dragons, which you might want to check out. But briefly, the Holmes Basic D&D set from 1977 came with polyhedral dice from an educational company called Creative Publications. The dice were rather malleable, however, and after a bit of rolling, the edges became worn, as you can see here. At the time, gamers jokingly referred to them as low-impact dice. Due to the popularity of D&D, there was actually a shortage of the dice, and for a time, the game came with chits that you could cut out and draw from a cup, and included a coupon to send away for actual dice. This is what I got when I purchased my Home's Basic D&D box set originally. Decades later, I thought, of trying to purchase those dice in the interest of completeness and a certain coveting to have the original dice set, but quickly discovered that I was not alone in this desire and they had become something of a collector's item and were going for outrageous prices on eBay. Last year, I picked up the Gary Khan old school replica dice that you see here. And these are still available, by the way, on the Gary Khan webpage for only $16. These are really nice, but they have the rounded edges of more modern dice. They're a bit larger than the originals, and the GC on every die for the high number sort of bugged me. And then I saw the really excellent dice replicas from Threshold Dice Works. Those dice pretty much have become my go-to dice, and I absolutely adore them. And after I got those, I felt that my quest was over and moved on. But of course, something always draws me back into things like this. A few weeks ago, this came across my Facebook feed. Man, they sure know how to get me. <laughs> so I clicked on the link and found these replica dice from Zuccotti Core. The mini box is what really caught my attention, which as you can see, here, the excellent artwork by graphic designer Sam L. L. Reese is a homage to David Sutherland's classic box art. However, the $45 price tag was a bit expensive, I thought, and decided against getting the dice. Besides, they weren't really exact replicas, merely mimicking the colors of the original and more closely resembled the dragon dice from later edition basic D&D. But you know how it is. These things keep cropping up and coming up in your feed. And I thought, well, it would probably be a good topic for a YouTube video. And with that very thin excuse for a justification, I clicked the buy button and now here they are. So let's pull the lid off this OSR Holmes dice replica and see what's inside, shall we? The back of the box provides some details about the contents because as you will see, there's more than just dice in here. Hmm, what's this? Unfolding reveals some basic old school maps, the reverse of which has some details about the artist and more of her artwork. After that is this nifty old school style character sheet. There are actually two, though I found this one here with the ammo boxes to be a bit more interesting and functional. These are neat, but really one folded up character sheet isn't that handy. No problem. Using the scanner app on my iPad, a careful lining up, and presto, I now have a PDF I can print out anytime I want. Though, to be honest, I doubt I'll ever use this one when I have old school character sheets by the talented James V. West readily available. Moving on. The dice are finally revealed and two crayons. Black and red to color in the dice, that's what they're for. Pulling the dice from their protective plastic wrapper, we can see that these are made of a heavy grade plastic resin. The numbers are nice and large, and the grooves pretty darn deep, which means they'll take to coloring really easy. Now, for those of you who have never seen this done, or know what the crayons are for, I'll demonstrate the process. 
You have to give the crayon a pretty good pressure, but not too much or you'll end up breaking the crayon. Over and over and over again, coloring in and trying to get as smooth a fill as possible. Now, typically, once the numbers are filled into my satisfaction, I use a paper towel to clean off the excess crayon. But since I have it available, I'm going to use a Dremel tool with the polishing wheel. If you use this method, be careful, just light touches at the lowest RPM so you don't mar the face of the dice. As you can see, I, I broke the crayon while coloring them in. <laughs> I also used the polish tool to smooth off the leftover sprue from the dice casting. And this is the end result. I'm not going to lie. I do not care for the crayon method of coloring in the numbers. If only there was a better, more expedient way. Oh wait, there is. Paint markers. I just happen to have a whole set. These are markers that use water-based acrylics. They are very handy for a variety of cool things. I use them to touch up the edges when I'm miniature painting, but they are also great for filling in the number on dice. To use these, you activate the paint by pressing down lightly on the tip to get the paint to flow. Here you can see the result of me using my red paint marker previously to color in one set of tens on my D20 from my Threshold Dice Works D20 set. And this turned out great and I use it in my games all the time. And here's one side of uh, the D4 from Zuccotti Core already done. So you can see the difference between this and the crayon. But let me demonstrate the application of the paint on a clean side. This doesn't take that much time, but you do have to be a little careful. Have a paper towel handy to help get the paint started. Also, I use a spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol. Just a very light spray on the paper towel and a very delicate touch and you can clean the dye off quite easily. If you're real careful, you can avoid too much need to clean the dice afterwards. But if you mess up like I did here, it's no big deal. The paint dries quickly and as you can see, you get a very clean result, much easier and quicker than with a crayon. I used white for the green D8 cider just for some variation. One thing about these dice, the grooves of the numbers are deep and look really great once filled in. If you have to, you can go back and retrace after the paint has had a chance to dry.
Fast forward, it didn't take that long to do all of these with the marker, maybe about 20 minutes. Now, after I got that project done, I started looking at that cute little box. Certainly, I can't throw it away. It's pretty solid and well-made and with great artwork. I then realized I had some adhesive felt squares lying around and thought this would make a cool dice tray. Scissors, ruler, pencil, and I'm in business. So, it's a simple matter of cutting the felt to size, test fit the cut, of course, and then sticking the felt to the box. The trick is to peel off a small lead tab, but don't start with the tab. Fit in the unpeeled side first and lay it down to the peeled end sticks, then reverse peel the backing paper. And you'll end up with a nice flat surface. Measure and cut the sides and you're all set. A really nice portable tray and carrier for your dice. Now, for my evaluation of this set, I'm kind of mixed about it, to be honest. The dice are nice, and the packaging definitely appeals to my nostalgia, but the extras really aren't anything that I'll ever use. This random adventure creator might serve as a springboard, certainly, but there are many such things available elsewhere and with more details and options. The same can be said for these old-school maps. Just Google Five Room Dungeons and you'll find that you have at your fingertips dozens of maps better done than this. As for the character sheets, they too aren't anything really to write home about. A bit more effort could have been put into them, and I mean, look at what James V. West does, and you'll have an idea of what could have been included. These are actual printed sheets, so to be useful, they'll have to be scanned into a document, but I guess if you were in a pinch, these would do. That leaves the dice. They are absolutely well made and look great and roll great and I'm happy with my purchase. I had a lot of fun inking them in even though I didn't use the included crayons. However, I still had to carefully smooth out the sprue marks with my Dremel tool. By comparison, the Gary Con dice are pretty nice, smooth and already done and completely inked in and retail for only $16. Then I have these dice from Threshold Dice Works that essentially sold on Etsy for around the same price as the Zuccotti dice. These are beautiful polished dice already colored in and do a great job of replicating the original Holmes dice. The Zuccotti dice look nothing like the Holmes dice but for the color and they aren't polished and inked in like the Threshold dice were. Essentially what I'm saying is that the Zuccotti dice are very nice. They are a legitimate modern iteration with a fully numbered D20 and actual presental dice done in the old school colors with sharp edges to give them that old school look. I also like the size of the numbers and their depths. Once colored in, they are super easy to read. A great feature to have for us old grognard dies. There's also the fact that Zuccotti has quite a few sets available. The initial run was 1,000 sets by comparison. As good as Threshold Dice Works dice are, their availability is limited to the production process, so they can be a little hard to get a hold of. They usually sell out the same day they are released. With all of that being said, my initial thought upon seeing the Zuccotti dice online was that they were a bit expensive for what they were, and after actually getting them in my hands, my evaluation still holds. The box is wonderful. Sam L. L. Reese's artwork is a fun homage and it's definitely a conversation starter. To add real value to this retrospective dice package, I would suggest that the character sheets in many dungeons be given a bit more flair and pizzazz to add to their visual appeal and functionality. But that's just my opinion. Uh, have you purchased this dice set? What do you think about them? Please leave a comment below. And that's about all I have for you now. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, uh, to my patrons, 
Thank you so much for your support and making these videos possible. Please feel free to click the subscribe button and click that little bell so you'll get notifications when I upload new content. Like, comment, and share. Check out my RPG Retro Review Facebook page, at me on Twitter, and check out my Teespring store where you can get some fun gaming swag for your gaming table and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true and game on.